Greetings, this is Indian in the Machine. We have an interesting topic in today's video regarding Mexican food. And we all know it's delicious, but there are some hidden dangers and health concerns that some people might not be aware of. Now, as I've traveled to Mexico over the years, I, like many, have sampled the tacos and uh, the beverages, the snacks. So much of it is so very delicious, and this is not a debatable issue. However, what I wanted to highlight is some issues and concerns that I've become aware of, and I've noticed that other people aren't necessarily aware of these. So by taking steps now in my awareness, I feel I've been able to effectively navigate all the food that I come into contact with and consume in Mexico and to help maintain my health, basically. So I'm not suffering from Montezuma's revenge. One can actually tell whether a food available in a culture is actually healthy by the numbers of dentists and doctors in business. And Mexico, like other Latin American countries, do have their fair share of dentists and dental issues. And that is directly related to the food. So let's get into it. Number one, the commonly available salt that everyone or the majority use contains fluoride. Now, this isn't a healthy move by any way you want to slice or dice it. And I know people are told that fluoride is good for teeth, but it actually rots teeth. It actually rots the body. It actually rots the brain. So this is a definite issue. It's probably the biggest issue, and that's why I put it number one. For myself, I do carry Himalayan salt with me, and I am not shy about taking it out and using it to salt the food. Now, I realize when I'm eating out that that food is salted with salt that contains fluoride, and I'm simply um, buffering that, you know, minimizing it, the concentration of the fluoride by using my own salt. And, you know, the best case scenario would be to avoid that salt and to probably not eat at most places, but I've chosen to find a personal balance that works for me. And I seem to be maintaining my connection with God and that is a barometer, by the way, if you are concerned about high fluoride intake or you're just learning about it now that it's not good for you, ask yourself, are you connected with God, like strongly connected? I don't mean just going to church every week. I mean like in your waking moments. And if not, Fluoride might be a factor. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is corn is actually not easily digestible without enzymes. Okay, so this is actually huge because corn is ubiquitous in the Mexican diet. And I've had experiences with uh, health, you know, digestive issues with, and with corn, and I've learned how to deal with it because I, I enjoy it like others do. 
and now the key to um, having corn in your diet and maintaining health is to have enzymes in particular lemon limon you know lime any citruses orange that sort of thing but other fruits have enzymes other foods have enzymes now so the best case scenario let's say if you had a taco or like a tortilla would be to have lemonade and the lime does help to digest the corn now the worst case scenario would be to have corn with soda pop and no enzymes in your food meaning you know all of your food is basically cooked so what's going to happen is that that corn doesn't digest and it could potentially build up in your gut resulting in a protruding gut and you know then you got bacteria set in to that undigested material and they're producing gases that uh, may likely bring discomfort or not to do anything beneficial whatsoever and I know this is an issue because I, I can see you know people's body shapes and I can see what they eat in their restaurants and you can make a connection if you see people eating pop with their corn tortillas or corn however it's served that there's a good chance they're having some health issues number three now from what I'm aware Mexico doesn't grow a lot of wheat maybe it doesn't grow any I didn't look that close but I know that they rely on imported wheat so the imported wheat you know there's actually lots of GMO going on there and a lot of people don't know this but they add bromine which I don't even know why they would do that it's they come up with some lame excuse but and it and it's not even added necessarily in Mexico it could be added from the country of origin like Canada for example and bromine is actually an iodine antagonist so that is even another issue whereas the iodine if you're not getting your seafood your diet might be low in iodine and if you are eating wheat meaning flour tortillas or regular bread or pastries or cake or donuts or even breaded meats that you could be actually depleting your iodine now because I do partake in some of this you know I I'm just I just take notes and I'm cautious as to the amount I intake and I actually do supplement with iodine so iodine is important for the thyroid it can help to keep you healthy it helps with immunity and you don't want to deplete your iodine basically you're just going to have a lot of health issues uh, sore throats uh, swollen lymph nodes and uh, actually you know a lot of your glands are functioning health healthily relating to iodine as well with the thyroid being probably the main one so this isn't by the way this is not a small issue okay this is um, could be a reason why you're getting sick more than you need to be number four pork now 
out of all the meat that I see in Mexico, most of it is pork. Maybe it's different in specific places, but I'm just going on my experience. And from what I understand, pork is probably the least healthy meat. And, you know, I get it. It tastes good. It's um, what Mexicans do with pork is amazing. They, they make very good food with pork. But from a health issue, it's probably not the best meat to use. And I want to stress this point that meats probably isn't the best part of the animal to consume. Now, Mexico actually is better than a lot of other countries because I noticed that they do consume the entire animal and you can get tacos that have various organs and it's actually fairly commonly available you don't have to look too far to find it so you could find for example tacos made with uh, tongue would be one example and that would be better so the best case scenario if you're consuming pork would be to go with those organs but in general, the meat and the animal itself, the pig, it's not the best source. Um, pig actually is genetically quite similar to humans. And, you know, a theory that does resonate with me is that, it, is that pigs are a genetically modified form or genetically modified creation from maybe Atlantean or Lemurian times. So consuming pork is closer to cannibalism than eating anything else. Okay, so that's the theory. Number five, fruit juices versus pop. Now, often when you eat out, you might get a, um, a combination lunch, which comes with the main dish. It comes with uh, maybe soup and maybe a drink, etc. And quite often that drink that is available is pop. So Again, this relates back to the enzyme issue where if you don't have enzymes in your meal and you're eating pop, you are just asking for health issues. Okay, so pop is everywhere. And here I want to, I want to share something with you. That, you know, pop, it's not, the issues are not just the sugar and the chemicals, or should I say the commonly known chemicals, but there's actually now a trend to put, I can't say the word because um, there are issues of censor censorship, but there are things now in the pop and in the commercial food now that is very harmful and it's so harmful i can't even tell you what it is okay so now luckily in mexico the f the fruit juices the aguas de frutas are very widely available and there's no reason why you can't get your your sweet um bud satisfied with those offerings and in my opinion, they taste way better than the pop. I happen to, you know, I used to love pop over when I was younger. And now, I don't know, I just don't enjoy it really that much. I rarely have pop. The sixth issue here now is magnesium. 
which you can actually associate magnesium generally with uh, green vegetables and there are other items like cacao now if you are looking hard enough you're going to find green vegetables in Mexico they're at the market they're inexpensive um, they feel they feel healthy in terms of you know energy but if you're eating out a lot you're not going to see massive amounts of green in your food so this is an issue because if you are eating cooked foods if you're eating acidic foods if you're if you're doing a lot of uh, regular tacos and pop etc coffee alcohol anything acidic it's very 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 easy to um, deplete your magnesium and not so easy to increase your magnesium so for myself because I do enjoy coffee and uh, some of my food obviously would be acidic it's quite common I mean most food is slightly acidic um, magnesium is an issue for myself particularly for the coffee so I do supplement with it and I do supplement with magnesium uh, chloride and I encourage people if you are eating regular food you know wherever you are in the world there's a good chance you're probably magnesium depleted and furthermore the soil by which most of the food is grown these days is probably magnesium depleted so the food is inherently magnesium deficient and we need magnesium and we need lots of it so this is not some you know insignificant issue like like a lot of these issues so put magnesium on your radar screen and and watch your health improve as you increase it now this is a major issue and it is often hidden from the common people's perception but the cookware in Mexico is no bien in general I actually travel with a cast iron frying pan <laughs> and I love it there is nothing better for me in knowing and in practice that I can fry an egg or some rice or anything and not have it harm me okay so one of the um, not so secret aspects of fried food in Mexico is that um, a lot of the restaurants will use the Teflon frying pans and they will use them even as the Teflon gets stripped away and becomes absorbed into the food which is bad which is not healthy and above and beyond that that even when there's no Teflon whatsoever on the surface they're still using it okay so they're basically frying with whatever that metallic alloy is underneath that is supposed to be underneath the Teflon that is not supposed to be coming into contact with our food okay so it results basically especially now if you're frying at high temperatures this is just a double triple quadruple whammy of detrimental health because you have that unhealthy alloy and then you're you're um, frying at high temperature and you're getting a lot of that into the, the food and furthermore if you go shopping for cookware there is a lot of in Mexico there is a lot of um, 
enamel-based cookware as well, and enamel is basically paint. So yes, it looks like designer cookware, but at the end of the day, you have fried your meal with fresh paint. And there's also other forms of cookware that I'm not even aware of, but I've seen, you know, some of the stoneware even. And, you know, if you're cooking with stoneware, I mean, that's that the stone particles are being probably glued together. So now to add to this issue, and I've looked, if you go shopping for cookware, you don't even find a lot of, I mean, I, I actually haven't found any um, cast iron in Mexico. I mean, it's got to be out there somewhere, but I just haven't seen it. Okay, so the cookware, definite, 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 definite issue. The Teflon is more fluoride. So meaning, like fluoride has detrimental effects on every aspect of your body, and in particular, your pituitary and pineal glands, and it removes your connection with God. So it's not a small issue, folks. Number eight. Now, this isn't an issue that's limited to Mexico. This is a worldwide issue in that the bread, people are not fermenting the bread. So yeasted breads basically aren't really that healthy because it's not um, natural. It's not, I don't know how to explain this, but um, let's go with uh, the breads have to be, number one, they, they have to be broken down, which bacteria, natural bacteria in our environment can do that, and that results in a fermented sourdough. So when we use yeasts, it's not as complete or um, let's say like a natural in a way in which our bodies can not get overtaken by yeast. That is even another issue. Furthermore, the flour tortillas aren't fermented either. And that's kind of like an unleavened product, which results in health issues. Okay, so it's the bread, it's the flour tortillas, it's the cakes, it's the donuts. And I'm not saying that we can't have these things, but you could have fermented donuts, sourdough donuts, you can have sourdough bread, you can have sourdough tortillas, so basically uh, Mexicans don't ferment their bread enough and if you've ever had a sourdough donut you will know it's delicious as is the sourdough bread you can have sourdough pizza so you get extra um, digestibility you get extra uh, vitamin uh, excuse me you get yeah extra vitamins and you can digest more of the minerals and you don't have the phytic acids to deal with. It's just an all around win-win if you ferment the bread and if you don't, or excuse me, the wheat. And if you don't, you just have health issues. No ifs, ands, or buts. So it's this is still a worldwide issue. Number nine, the omega oils. If you're eating regular Mexican food over time, there's a good chance you're not getting your omega-3s, which are more widely available in, well, seafood would be a good source and uh, nuts and seeds, 
which they are available in Mexico, but um, I don't see a lot of nuts and seeds in regular, you know, Mexican restaurant food. So, and a lot of the frying oils actually are like vegetable oils, corn oils, and those aren't high in omega-3s. So, basically this is a major issue. I personally don't have as much of a concern because I regularly eat fish and I'm getting my omega-3s that way. I regularly eat ceviche, which is probably ceviche or ceviche, which is the regular, which is the best way, in my opinion, to uh, eat fish because I'm not frying it and it's quite often it can be quite fresh and ceviche is made with lime and then you're getting that digestibility of the lime in your food and to me it's just a wonderful food I can't get enough of. And uh, actually a friend of mine asked me who looked at my skin and asked me if I apply cream to my skin and I said no and I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the ceviche which uh, you know the omega-3s are just so amazing for the body okay so my final issue now here is regarding the honey or sugar you know sweeteners So Mexico actually is quite amazing for uh, whole sugars, and uh, I believe they call it mascabado, mascabado, which is basically the whole cane sugar. And of course, there's uh, the processed white sugar is widely available as well, but uh, I will choose that brown dark sugar at any opportunity that I have over the others, the white sugar. And with honey, now honey is widely available, but I did learn that there is a bit of a scam, which I completely fell for, where they do sell corn syrup and somehow they get it to be um, very honey-like, but um, it's, I don't think it's honey in a lot of cases. Um, and then another thing that they do is that they'll even add a little dead bee into it to get you to think that it's actually 100% uh, honey. And really it could be, it actually could be like 60% corn syrup, 40% honey, and a couple dead bees. Okay, so anyways, I fell for this a lot until I caught on, and then I could, I could, you know, um, I could tell that it was syrup once I was made aware that there would be syrup in there. Anyways, it's not a scam that's everywhere, but uh, it could be an issue. Okay, so because I'm I'm regularly consuming the commonly available agua de frutas, the fruit water, there's a good chance they're using the white sugar. And for me, that's just a price I'm willing to pay for the convenience. But in an ideal situation and when I'm at home, I do like that mascabato sugar and I would even probably prefer it over honey if I wasn't sure of the quality of the honey. And one thing to note is if you have a high quality sugar in your life is that you don't crave sweet sugary pops and sweet drinks okay 
Now, another amazing thing about Mexican food is that um, fruit is widely available and you can get your sugar fix that way. Or, you know, I'm just saying sugar fix, but really it's just your, our bodies need some sugar. And fruit is an amazing way to get that. Okay, so all in all, though, I want to leave you with the impression that I have a very favorable view of Mexican food. I love going to the markets. I love preparing it myself. And I love what other people do with it. However, in the environment of awareness and consciousness and uh, cultural practices and uh, corporate practices, that there are various concerns that I have and I feel other people, if they knew of these concerns, could effectively navigate the, some of these potential health landmines and continue to enjoy the bounty and the wide availability and affordability of Mexican food. I hope this has helped you out there. I hope this has helped you to enjoy Mexican food even more and that you don't shun it. You simply know how to navigate for the best health possible. And I feel that I'm living proof that you can be extremely healthy in, in an environment that maybe not is so healthy at times. Okay, so thanks for listening. I enjoyed sharing this with you. I've been thinking about these issues and sharing them with you for quite a while. So I hope you enjoy. And if so, please uh, pass this information along because we all can be healthy together. This is a dream I hope we share together. Thank you for listening.